Fidel Castro, face the nation. In the early hours of yesterday morning, this was the scene in the studio of television station CMQ in Havana, Cuba. The revolution is over and the studio is jammed with newspaper photographers, armed guards, studio technicians, armed rebel fighters. From this studio in Havana, you are about to see Fidel Castro, leader of the successful rebel forces who overthrew the dictatorship of General Batista. And now by television tape recording, you will see Fidel Castro face the nation. Now here is the moderator of Face the Nation, CBS News correspondent, Stuart Novins. The revolution in Cuba has thrown out the Batista administration and it has installed a provisional government. That was the first step. Now the revolution must consolidate itself. The government must be organized to cope with the many, many problems that now face this country. The men upon whose strength all this depends is Dr. Fidel Castro, who is here now to face the nation. Dr. Castro, the American people hope that a true democracy will emerge here in Cuba. We want to ask you about your personal plans and about what you hope for your country. In order to do that, we're here in this special edition of Face the Nation, and the gentleman I want to identify on your side is there to help you with language if you need it, and I'm sure you won't. May I introduce our panel of newsmen, Dr. Castro? Jay Mallon of Time Magazine, Richard Bate of CBS News, William L. Ryan of the Associated Press, who will ask the first <coughs> question. Mr. Ryan? Dr. Castro, the recent events in Cuba have been full of hope for the Cuban people, but is this hopeful revolution now being threatened by some person or persons within the revolutionary organizations? Our interpreter on this special edition is Mr. Jack Skelly, who has lived here in Cuba for 25 years, a former UP correspondent in Washington. Well, I'm going to tell you, the, the government, the, the president of Cuba now is consolidated in the power I have the help of the biggest movement <coughs> and of the public opinion. That is the 26th of July yes, movement, Doctor. Yes, and many other organi and other organizations. And he is sure in power. The only thing worrying me is, uh, is some group that is keeping an um, and I asked, I spoke to the polling opinion, and I asked why to give ban if there is no tyranny. I asked for they uh, give the arm, turn the arms again, and they said they are going to to give the arm. Doctor, just it is, there is no difficult at all because public opinion in Cuba is now very strong, and with a uh, tremendous force. Nobody is enough powerful to op opposite now the public opinion of the free country of Cuba. Doctor, Doctor, just for clarification, this group that has been carrying arms, I is this the student group, the university group? Not the university group, because the students are almost... How do you listed. identify this group, Doctor? A group that uh, several years ago they were students. Now they, now they are not a student, and not all day. Two or three day leaders that I am surely that they are men, they men are not going to follow themselves. They this is the group of Fore Chamon. Yes, but Fore Chamon is going to be to fall in crisis. Crisis? Crisis. In crisis. Yes. Because the group is a group of young idealistic and uh, good men. Mr. Bate, is this, this the my same opinion. group? They cannot do anything at all. It will not uh, be another thing than the, a, a word war. Dr. Castro, is this no? the same group that... Not uh, is this the same group, however, that uh, you spoke of the other night when you said someone had stolen some arms from an arsenal near Cuba? Yes. 
Have you gotten those arms back? Yes, they said they were to turn back, and they cannot do anything because of you have re all the mother of Cuba has said that it's not necessary that I send a soldiers to take our soldiers to take the arms because they are decided to go and to take the arms. <coughs> that is what the mothers of Cuba say, you know, and they cannot do anything. Public opinion is powerful in Cuba, and nobody can opposite public opinion in this time. What I do is to be with the public opinion that have uh, confidence in our movement and in myself and in the provisional government. That is why I think that we will have no trouble. Do you know why? Because we have the power, the forces, the army force, and we are not, we are near the president. We help the president without condition. The civil government is sure. Doctor. He gives orders to us, and we are decided to obey the orders because we are men of law, Doctor. not professional of, uh, of the arms. Mr. Mallon? Is it clear? Yes, yes. Do you believe yes. that the public opinion will hear me in the United States and understand me? I am sure they will, Dr. Castro. I, I am not very much sure. Of your English, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think to improve for next time. Very good, but you're doing very well now. Mr. Mallon? Dr. Castro, do you believe that the directorio will surrender these arms uh, voluntarily? No. They are men that are good men, young men, will not do anything against the revolution. And they, ma many of them think in good, well, and love the revolution and the country. There are two or three leaders, uh, small leaders, with big ambitions. That is all. And not difficult at all. You can be sure that will not be difficult. I know quite well my country. I know quite well my people. I know quite well the public opinion. I, I know that who rule in Cuba now, who gives orders now in Cuba, is the public opinion with the free press <coughs> as the vehicle, as the, 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 the vehicle. Way, way. Yes. Dr. Dr. Castro. Uh, yes, <laughs> go ahead, Mr. Arn. Uh, just what are the ambitions of these leaders? Just what do they want specifically? Nobody knows. What they, what they want is to, to worry, to, to uh, <laughs> they was th what they want is something as name, and I suppose they, as they see the 26th July movement has the help of all the public opinion. You have seen? Did you see yesterday the people? Dr. Hundreds, <coughs> hundreds of thousands of people were in the street. They saw that. Those two or three leaders, and they cannot be happy. What they want is to give us headache. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Castro, headache. I think there's no doubt that your 26th of July movement is the best organized group and perhaps the largest group, but does that mean that you intend to run the government by yourself? Or will there be... Myself? Uh, not you, but your party. Will there be participation of other political not parties? Not participation, because the president wanted to design the, the majority of the minister, of the member of the government. He, he asked us to help him. He asked us so that we permit that our men take part, take part in the government. At the beginning, we were not interested. Well, what about the directorio, Dr. Castro? Will they also have positions in the ministers, in the ministry, in the cabinet? Well, the president, when, when we, s we elected him, <coughs> it was without condition, you know? And what happened is this. <coughs> if this small group, you give participation in two or three months, if they want, they said this is not good for anything. You give they, you give they, 
participation, they use that to produce a crisis. It is better for the, for the government, for the surely, and for the, the, development, the development of the, go the provisional government, so that we have no possibility of crisis. You think you it know? is the purpose of the Directorio to create a real crisis in Cuba so that they can take no. over power? Is that what you're saying? Two or three small leaders yes. that are trying to produce, not, not to produce the crisis, are trying to play with fire. Do you know? Yes. But they, that they will not go very far because nobody follow those kind of people. Dr. Castro, you, you said that yes. in uh, that you, is the truth. You Madre. said that in 18 months or so there will be free elections in Cuba. When yes. this time comes, will uh, the will all political parties be allowed to run candidates in these elections? Yes, of course. All political parties, including the directorial. Of course, if we don't give free to all the political parties to organize, we are not a dem democratic. A country, we have fought for the democracy here and, and for the free, for the freedom Why of our people. We don't want to stop and to put any difficult to anybody. And we I believe in democracy. Why will it be necessary to wait 18 months before free elections can be held? Well, do you do you think it is good for the Cuba now when all the people what want is peace, when all the people that what one is that the government repair the mistakes and the the barbarity of the before government. Don't you believe that our country needs at least one year to work? Do you believe that between in the in the in the fight of the political party is it possible to do anything? If we give a free election tomorrow, we win because we have almost all the people. We have now more people than in 18 years. Do because after, after, after 18 years, I am sure many people are going to be tired. Do you of feel me that and of everybody because people tire very, very fast. But do you feel that there would be that trouble if free elections were held tomorrow in Cuba? Do you feel that you would rather have almost uh, over a year in order to uh, uh, consolidate things before free elections are held. I think it is good at about 18 months, not more and not less, because as you know the political party need time for reorganize organize yes. and each, to work, each party. to make, prop, to make mm -hmm. propaganda, propaganda. But Dr. Castro, what guarantees and are there then after 18 months? What is the guarantee that there will be free elections after 18 hmm. months? Well, the public opinion in first place. Second place, our word. Third place, our intention that have been proved. Fourth thing, our because we are men without interest. Are you considering uh, revising yes, the country? Yes, and five, because it is logic. What we win in not doing election. If we have the people, don't you believe we have the people of Cuba? Do you want to make a survey? Not at all. Okay. I, I'm, I you just have want to satisfy uh, my own curiosity in this respect. Uh, are you considering, for example, uh, revising the Constitution in any way to, to protect the uh, rights which have been trampled on before? Why? Why there is, it is not necessary at all? It is not necessary. Our constitution, everybody in our country is happy with our constitution. Yes. To change the constitution now is to provocate, to provocate to difficult. Provoke. Not, people is not going to be quiet. And what the country needs is that everybody have confidence. And we have said our constitutional law is the constitution of 1940. And everybody is happy and he's sure, and know what to do. Dr. Mr. Mellon? Uh, Is it clear? Will the uh, communist or a communist front party be permitted to participate in the elections? What? <coughs> what? 
what they th what they think about that is this the uh, when the tyranny was falling in the country they are, they, they are going to be the same right that were before 19 the 10th of march 10 1952 and what i think that they uh, this that all the rights of the constitution are ought to be come respected respect are you afraid of the idea do you believe that the dem democratic man ought to be afraid of any idea? Dr. Castro, I you are a man lawyer. Of faith. You are a lawyer, mm -hmm. and I'm afraid I will have to act as a judge. We'd like you to answer our questions. <laughs> well, I am not afraid <laughs> no, of freedom I, at all. May I ask you a question, <coughs> sir? As a lawyer, and as one who has spoken very eloquently about the civil rights yes. that must be guaranteed to the Cuban yes. people, how do I you will explain? never be against any right. That is my thinking in politics. Very I am good. not communist at all. But I will never be against any right. Well, may I Castro? ask you, sir, why is it when you have that attitude, which you obviously believe very strongly, why with that attitude have there been so many executions across Cuba without open free trials? What? Well, not so many. How many? I don't know exactly about why you... Two or three dozen of criminals. Because I think that just is the first thing necessary for the happiness of the country. And because if somebody has killed 12 or 15 or 30 men, has not right at all to live. And you in the United States, when somebody kills one, you send it to the chair, electric chair. Yes, but it's After a trial. Why do you in the After United States kill so many people every year in the electric chair? <laughs> Dr. Castro, Do you permit me to ask you? After a trial. After a trial, Dr. Castro. Doctor, we don't want to debate, but the <coughs> point that I'm trying to get your opinion on is this. There have been no of open course, trials. Of course. Exactly. By I trial, with proof, by trial, not without trial. I, in a military kind of tribunal. Court. They were judged. It's important that the American of people course, know that. That's why I'm asking. Surely. Certainly. You can be surely. We will never uh, punish anybody with a trial. Trial. May I ask Dr. Castro... What happened is this. Yes. The proof are very easy. You want to go to some... For example, you go to some a small city. The captain of police have killed 20 men. A dozen of mother go to the trial to say this killed my my son this killed my son this killed everybody no the proof is easy but this is a military court doctor yes yes and another thing you ought to know and if you don't know you ought to ask and to informate public opinion of the united states that we in the war during the war actually thousands of prisoners and that we never kill it we never torture anyone. We never stroke anyone. That is a, a fact, a history fact here. Yeah. And you can be surely that overall we are, we are, we, uh, we are a person. Responsible. We respect yes. the Dr. human Castro, right. I ask you another and question. what we think is this, <coughs> that the criminal ought to be punished because we don't want that never again in our country. Criminal can be the chief of policemen and of the army. Dr. Dr. Castro, uh, we've heard that there uh, are soldiers now training in the Sierra Maestra. Uh, we've heard uh, your brother, as a matter of fact, made a statement that uh, the soldiers of the revolution were not going to immediately return to civilian life. Are, are these men being trained, additional new troops, for possible trouble in Cuba, or are they being trained uh, to possibly participate in other hot spots in the Caribbean? Thank you.
question is being interpreted. Not, right? not, not, not. We are training some groups of those men that were not regular soldiers of the revolution. And so that we joined them, they were with bad arms. Mm -hmm. And they were doing what they could against the tyranny. And what we have made is to take them, to join them, to disciplinate them as a matter of public order. How large an army do you feel Cuba needs in Not normal very times? Big. Not very big because we have as army all the people of Cuba. When it be necessary to defend our country, here the men and the women fight. I think that everybody ought to be soldier of our country to defend our paid, paid but country. our country. That is why we don't need a big army. We need uh, a small army for defense, for keeping the order when it be necessary, and to defend the country. Dr. Castro, what is the attitude of your group toward the Dominican Republic? What? What is the attitude of your group toward the Dominican Republic? Of course, we think that Trujillo is our enemy. We think that. It don't, does not mean that we are going to attack Trujillo. But Trujillo sent very much arms to Batista during the Civil War. And Trujillo is enemy of every democratic government. And Trujillo is always trying to do everything he can against democracy here in Cuba, in Venezuela, and in other countries. Trujillo is the enemy of all the... Would, would your country sell arms to a rebel movement in the Dominican Republic? I think, I think that the provisional government would not sell arms to for revolution. Dr. I Dr. think that what is it, and I, what I think, I would not sell. I would give. <laughs> Mr. Ryan. Dr. Yes. Castro, may I well, to another well, I, I, I want to tell you that it doesn't mean that I am going to give up. I see. You want to be, you, you want to be clear. I sympathize with the, the Dominican. But it is not necessary to buy arms to defeat a tyranny. We proved that it was not necessary. Dr. If Castro. the Dominican want, they alone are enough for defeating Trujillo. What they needed was the example, and we gave them the example. Would you give them Do you some understand advice? now? Yes. Would you give them some advice in the form of some trained leaders, perhaps some field commanders, some military strategists? Question being interpreted for Dr. Castro. No, not at all. What we want now is peace. We, what we want now is to pay attention to our things here. That is what we want now. Dr. Castro, could you tell us what your opinion is of United States policy during this period of your revolution? Well, the, well, do you want to tell you the truth? That's all we want. <laughs> I know. I, I sympathize with the people of the United States. Not us, because I want to, to win the people now. But really and sincerely, I think the people of the United States, the people, newsmen of the United States, you have known many during the war and after the war. And I have a wonderful opinion of all you. And about government of the United States, I think they were mistake. About Cuba, and about United and the other country of, of America, they armed dictator, believing it was a good politica, because they didn't think what kind of people are those people of Latin America. What I think is the United States have been not worried at all uh, about our feeling our democratic feeling, United States is speaking about democracy and forgetting the feeling, democratic feeling of those countries of Latin America. Perfect. And between them, Cuba. Do you see those Sherman tanks? Do you see those airplanes? Do you see 
those big bonds of 500 pounds, they were sold by government of the United States to Batista. And Batista was always telling to the soldiers, to his soldiers, United States is with us. United States is uh, helping us. United States is giving arms to us, you know? And so he, he engañaron. <laughs> he didn't never said the truth to the United States, and so he carried the arm, he carried his army to the, to the complete destruction. Because he said, here, you see, there are the 10 officers, 12 officers here, training you, United States, help us, help me. And the soldier believes the United States was helping him. Dr. Well, Dr. but United States, I ought to recognize, I ought to recognize that the last year, United States changed his policy. United States didn't send arms to Batista. Stop. But you asked me how was his political. I said you the truth. I think it was a mistake. He stopped. It was good, and we are happy for that. United States recognized our government. It was good. We are happy for that. Do you understand? Yeah, is there any truth is to the story I that... the United States change. Is there any truth to the story that you've asked or are thinking about asking the recall of the American ambassador here? I cannot, I cannot ask for that because I am not the Minister of State, the Secretary of State. Do you know? I, I cannot answer you about that. Dr. Castro, I don't the want to inter make intervention. In the, in the government. There is one question I think you can answer very briefly. I understand that a businessman has offered you $25,000 for your beard. Did you accept the offer? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I am not going to sell my, my beard. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Castro, and thanks to Jay Mallon of Time Magazine, Dick Bate of CBS News, William L. Ryan of the Associated Press. This is Stuart Novins. We invite you to join us again for Face the Nation. Today's special edition came from Havana. Face the Nation was produced by Ted Ayers, associated in production with Frank Dongi and Roberta Wilkinson. The director for television station CMQ in Havana was Roberto Miranda. Today you saw by television recording Dr. Fidel Castro, leader of the rebel forces who overthrew the dictatorship of General Batista in Cuba, Face the Nation. Members of the panel who interviewed Dr. Castro were William L. Ryan of the Associated Press, Jay Mallon of Time Magazine, and Richard Bate of CBS News. The moderator was CBS News correspondent Stuart Novins. Face the Nation is a weekly presentation of CBS News.